Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Joining me to my left is Ben Kinsley, who is co-producer, um, co-host, and a sponsor of the show. Take it away, Ben. Yeah, look, wear a couple different hats. Yes, apparently. exactly. Um, I'm also uh, the uh, owner and operator of a consulting firm called Imperium Advisors, and uh, really started out as a public policy development um, organization. We did a lot of uh, public policy research. Um, quickly realized, working with our clients, that coming up with a good idea is not enough in and of itself. Um, so uh, we added on top of that uh, services in the state house, uh, you know, legislative monitoring and lobbying, those kinds Great. of things. Um, realized that it, that was also not enough. Added uh, a lot of uh, advocacy outreach um, things on top of that. So everything Great. from customer relationship management, um, communication strategy, social media, uh, all kinds of different things. Excellent. So, and you're here. And I'm here. And I went and went, our guests and I went to the same event this afternoon, this morning. Oh, yep. And um, I got about six or seven people came up and said, thank you for what you're doing. So there's actually people out there who watch us. Yeah, you, you should have asked them, what am I yeah, doing? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what shows? I want to check. Yeah, I, like I didn't it. get any of those today. I'm, oh, I, I did. Anyway, our guest is Michael Bolarski, mm -hmm. who is a reporter for True North Reports. And I was trying to say the word prolific because mm -hmm. he's got great articles oh. in True North Reports. I've got a good editor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're welcoming him tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I just coincidental, we were at the same event today. Mm -hmm. It was um, John Clark. Mm -hmm introduced to everybody 11 new candidates mm -hmm. who have never been in politics, have amazing backgrounds, and um, they call themselves part of the Republican Party as agro... Agri-Republicans. Agri Agri-Republicans. Agri yep. That's almost as hard as prolific. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was an excellent introduction of the people. John did a great job. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we'll, I've, I handed out the card to everybody, and they all said they wanted to come on. So great. I'll have to um, reiterate my uh, invitation to the 12 guests. Tw it was 12 candidates. Was there, tw oh, that's there was right, one, was that one lady. came in late. Yep. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I've, I've already reached out to the Republicans and Democrats, but I have to do it again. Mm -hmm. You have to keep reminding them. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a little far yet. To it's, it's a little ways a little out, early. and uh, you know, people have a lot of things going on. So. Yes, they do. It's holiday time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, John, uh, John, Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I was just with John Clark in my brain. Um, we took a couple of, of articles uh, that Michael has written to talk about today, and I have to give notice. This is January 9th. And it is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. We love everything you do. We thank you. Mm. And um, keep up the good work. Mm. How's that? Blue Lives Matter. Yes. <laughs> Blue Lives Matter, <laughs> exactly. John, if this, you want to look in this one, that's, mm. your, uh, oh. that's your camera. Nope, that's OK. So um, you want to introduce yourself to mm. our viewers. OK. Um, I'm a Michael Belowski, writer with True North Reports. And also, I write each week for the Hardwick Gazette and on occasion for the Montpelier Bridge. Oh, nice. And, uh, yep, the Hardwick is that are the ones that brought me to Vermont. Thank you for, for that. And, uh, and now I'm probably, I, I don't know, loved or hated, depending on who, <laughs> who, who you, you talk ask, to. Yeah. Exactly. That's good. Good for you. So mostly state house reporting. Yeah. So you do it for the bridge, too? Um, I've only been doing a story every few months for oh, them, really? although they are having a lot of a turnover at right. their editorial level and I met one of their their newest editor whose name I'm sorry I forgot but anyway uh, I think I will be writing about monthly for them. Oh great good. State Is House Nat reporting. Frothingham still there? Is no oh, he, he left about two years ago oh, but he, oh, he brought me on board with them so he's, that was I good. loved him he was a great he's guy I'm sure he just retired. Yeah. Yep Probably. he's retired. Yeah. We all have so. to retire at some time. I'm getting nope. close. Yeah, you, <laughs> you don't take your own advice there. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's talk. The first article was about sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. yep. and I live in one. Huh? I live in one. <laughs> Do you? Plainfield, Vermont uh, declared themselves a sanctuary city. Ay, ay, ay. Yep. Um, so can you explain, first of all, what is a sanctuary city? And somehow it has to do or is involved in with, with fair and impartial policing. A related so, topic, yeah. yeah. Can, so maybe kind of how that interlate. works together. I was actually confused when I was putting some of these questions It, it is confusing, I, and, and for keeping it simple, I'm going I'm to stick with for sanctuary cities yeah, first. Yeah, go ahead. So 
Uh, well, the core of it is communities are telling the law enforcement that they're not um, supposed to cooperate with ICE, ICE. and with the, fed, with the feds on immigration. And, um, you, you know, I was talking with a friend about this last night, and he asked me a simple question because we're going to do the show today. He said, um, isn't the state law and the federal law kind of take precedent here? Right. And, and I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I, right. think, I think so. I'm not a legal scholar by any means. But. When I worked for the state and I worked in motor vehicles, you had two options. If the, if the feds have a law, you can either expand it or um, you can clarify it, but you cannot go against it. You can't say no. You mm -hmm. can say you can make it bigger than it, add things to it, but right. you've got to keep the essence with the federal law. So we're wrong. I so anyway, the essence of the state um, S-79, the, the bill that almost made the entire state of Vermont a uh, sanctuary state, so to speak, uh, whatever it was that was the crux of that was eventually taken out at some point because there was over, I believe, over $2 million yes. on hold. Right. And, uh, well, I guess it speaks for itself. When Money talks, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> So the language was finally modified so that the rhetoric was still there that police should not, are strongly discouraged from uh, cooperating with the feds, cooperating with ICE, but they're still allowed to under circum cir certain circumstances, uh, particularly when they're There's investigating a serious crime. Right. And it pertains to that serious crime. Now, depending on who you talk to, you get different answers about what that means. When I interviewed Michael Hall, the retired uh, police chief from Manchester, he said this is a really serious deal. He said if you um, talk with ICE or talk with the feds under any circumstances, whether it's related to a crime or not, then you are skating on thin ice, I think was the words he used. Now, when I talked to um, uh, uh, Joe Facos, uh the, yeah, or Tony, 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 I'm sorry. Tony, here in Montpelier. Tony Facos here in Montpelier, he had a slightly different take on it. He said, well, you can't just pick somebody out and if you suspect them to be here right. illegally right. and then pursue that and call ICE and call the feds. But again, if it's related to a serious crime, mm -hmm. um, you know, human trafficking, drug smuggling, any of those type of things, then you can and should. Um, inquire with the feds. Well, I have to tell you a story about, I was thinking about it when I was writing these questions. When I was commissioner of personnel, two ICE guys, the ICE guys, came <laughs> in to see me and said they're looking for three illegal immigrants who came over the border and they heard they were going to DMV to get IDs, mm. fake IDs. That's what, they didn't want driver's license, they just wanted the, the IDs that we give them out. So. I said, sure. And this was before all of this, because I don't know what I would have done. So I said, sure, come on, let's go down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was laughing. These three sat together. It was a, it was a crowded, crowded room, stand, people were standing, and there's these three guys standing, uh, sitting over in the corner. I mean, I, I, it's not type anything. They stood out like sore thumbs in, in the, the DMV um, waiting room, and the, they went off with the ice, people, ice guys. And I thought, they're here to get illegal documentation. I don't know if we would have, they had documents with them that they, that they needed. Well, if they're going to the DMV, they're not illegal documentation. That is legal documentation. If you fake the DMV documentation, that's illegal. Well, but they had fake mm. ID to show the DMV to get the real. Right, which, so, which is. My, which is bad, that's a law, that's against the law. Michael Hall brought that issue up when I interviewed him. He said, once you hand out um, IDs without checking your, your immigration yeah, status, right. it opens up a whole Whole For sure. So these guys would have been, if they had been successful, would have been walking around with the real IDs. Mm -hmm. And who would have ever checked? Right. To get an um, ID card at that time, what was, you know, what Oh, was there was required? a whole list of things, um, uh, birth certificate, passport, whatever. But apparently they had birth certificates that they were given. Gotcha. For oh, my when gosh. When they came into the... So that, know, that alone is a federal crime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, so well, I didn't have any problem saying hello, goodbye, because I even spotted them. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, you had to see them. They were like, really, people? Could you have split up? So mm -hmm. you weren't like, here we are. 
I, and they were, they went, I give them credit, they went along very peacefully, but I, <clears> I just hope, I don't want these guys to have that kind of documentation. So one of the things at play here is jurisdiction, which is, um, which is a little tricky to, you know, uh, to some people um, because it has to do with our legal system, right? So for example, we have a number of federal agencies, ICE, right. um, FBI, who have uh, jurisdiction um, domestically, Right, and those are federal agencies uh, mm -hmm. that can bring um, enforcement action against federal law. Right, right, and mm -hmm. and on top of that, you also have your standard legal system, your attorney general system, um, or state or um, federal attorney. Right, so we have a federal attorney for right. Vermont. Right, in Burlington. Um, the state has their own legal system. They have mm -hmm. state's attorneys and the attorney general, um, as well as uh, um, sheriff's departments, which are kind of not really part of the state. They're really independent agencies. Mm -hmm. um, um, that can arrest people and who they think are violating either state or federal law. Right, right. Right, um, and, uh, and then an attorney general or a, a state's attorney or a federal attorney can bring uh, an enforcement action. They have to bring, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have to be accused and um, whatnot right. of, of a crime, so violating either state law or a federal law, depending on who the attorney is. Mm. Um, so that's one of the things that's kind of at play here is we have a number of different levels right. that are kind of overlapping and you know we have the FBI and ICE, we have um, state police, sheriff's departments and local police um, and local police really are only r required to enforce um, city ordinances. Right. They often enforce state ordinances and of course in, in many instances they also will uh, arrest people for violations of federal law, you know, right. murder, right. financial crimes, right. things like that. Um, sometimes that's the FBI, though. If you have things like, you know, drug enforcement, that's usually not local police. Right. That'll either be a state police action or a federal. But the law enforcement of all levels, they all work together. Because when I know the, the CVO, the um, mm -hmm. motor vehicle, the, the large trucks and stuff, when we had our officers in motor vehicles, they would work with the feds all the time for cross-border right. cross um Stealing and and mm -hmm. and trying to get drugs in in Vermont, so yeah, they work and, closely and drugs together. Is probably the biggest example right. of this, right? right? Where you have either a local um, police department or a state police department right. or even a sheriff's office working with a federal yeah. um, a federal branch that could be the FBI, it could be um, ATF, right? Uh, right. And you know, bring an enforcement action, right? So right. there's definitely examples of that. What S 79 did and what a lot of the sanctuary cities have done is basically said you can still work with the feds, mm -hmm. um, federal agencies, whether it's ATF, ICE, um, right. FBI, there's dozens of others, um, except for in this one area. We don't want you to coordinate in this one area because, you know, for a whole whole list of reasons. That well, I think Hall there. brought it up. No, uh, Hall, Fakos was, yeah. they want them to feel comfortable yes. to come forward if they've been involved in a crime right. or if they've seen a crime right. and right. they come been in a and, victim of a crime, you know, right. I'm so-and-so yeah. and, yeah. and then they get arrested for being good They, they don't want a witness to, to be hesitant to come yeah. forward. Right, while they get afraid to, to come dragged forward. off. But, but Hall, who is, again, much, much more critical of this right. whole initiative, he said, you know, when it, when it comes to investigating. I think he used the examples of, of drugs and human trafficking. Human trafficking actually has been something, we, mm. we've written a couple of articles about it. That's getting and, even and, uh, bigger, I think. Christina Nolan, the U.S. attorney right. here, she, she's been doing a lot of um, press releases and reports about that. And, and Christina uh, Nolan is the federal, federal right. attorney federal. for Vermont. The federal right. attorney for just, Vermont. Just to be clear. So that's obviously a real thing. And I've also, I've done a, no, a number of articles over the years about the Canadian border uh, people coming down. Sometimes it's actually uh, people from the southern border who take an airplane over the country and then to come they, in that way. To, to come in that way. Apparently, m maybe it's easier to do it that way, or there's less. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Do you know we have 14 border crossings and only two, or maybe three, are manned mm -hmm. or staffed with um, oh with boy. border crossings. You can oh. there's you know people's backyards. You just walk across. Yeah. So. That, that's a lot of that's a lot of border crossings for a small state like mm -hmm. Vermont. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are um, have like Jersey barriers or something. Right. Where you have right. to, and you, they you have can't to, take a vehicle. It, there's if it. if you cross, there's um what do you call those lights, and you break the light, and yeah. they know that somebody's crossed. Mm -hmm. So so Hall was saying that even just the the notion that 
um, officers should be discouraged from inquiring about immigration status right. it is going to be, it can be a hindrance on right. their ability to, to solve other crimes unrelated to yeah. immigration. So the human trafficking is an interesting one because we were kind of just talking about it where um, someone who's a victim of a crime, mm -hmm. right, may be less likely to come forward or report mm -hmm. it to authorities if they feel like right. their immigration right. status is going to be questioned, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword depending on which one right. you're talking about. And I think probably what what Hall is is concerned about is the f having the flexibility to gauge that situation, right? right? Is, is that, you know, it's not the state making the decision for right. you, it's right. the police officers and the police department saying, you know, do we want to bring this to the feds yeah. or do we not? Because this is going to spook our way. It was a really big issue years ago, and I don't know what job I had. I can't remember. I think it might have been motor vehicles where the police stopped a whole carload of illegal aliens. That, I think I might have written about that. And one. that was that, that was familiar. just hit the papers everywhere. It was yep. really bad. Um, I had done at least one of those stories in the past year. Oh, did you really? Because they just mm. looked and they just assumed, mm. and. Um, there was, everybody got involved in it, all of the immigration yep. uh, support groups that they have here. Yep. They were all going down to state police. Yep. So, so the way Hall said to me, he said, we need to know who we're dealing with, you know, when, for, any, for any instance, for any crime. We need to know who we're dealing with. And if you can't ask right. where you're from, that, that's, that's a hurdle. Right. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, I don't want to waste of your time, but Bruce and I were in Canada and we had our motorcycles. And we had the helmets and the jacket and the gloves and the boots, and you couldn't tell whether I was purple, gray, or green. <laughs> and on my car, on my thing, Bruce thinks you can't buy things on a motorcycle, but you can. You just put them in the back. <laughs> and we had bungee cords all over the place. Oh, gosh. And he and I, we went through Maine, mm -hmm. uh, crossing in Maine. Uh, Bruce was up there two seconds, and he waves me on. So on I go. And I had, I had sunglasses on, and I, I have a... Mm -hmm. walkie-talkie thing between uh, Bruce and I. I said, what the heck was that? I said, he didn't... I said, I could be a mass murderer and, <laughs> and come into Maine. Turns out, two weeks later, this was right before 9-11, mm -hmm. some of the terrorists came in oh, from that from crossing. Border. And I said, well, that doesn't surprise me. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. This guy didn't even... He didn't even look. And I know from my CVO officers in motor mm -hmm. vehicles that they want to interview you in your face yeah. because they can tell different turning to the left if you're lying and doing this and that, but yeah. you couldn't see anything except my teeth because I was smiling. <laughs> I said, yes, I'm from the United States. Zing. Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? Was that going out or coming in? Coming back in. Coming back in. Just yeah. the way the terrorists if they, were. If, just you have, in. if you have a U.S., even if you have a license plate in the car, they don't, they just... Well, you, that's just wrong because even, even today, they basically just say, all right, when did you go into Canada? Right, right. Yeah. All right. I went. Right. Went visited recently, and it was. Kind well, of they're crazy. much more stringent going out if you're a U.S. Right. citizen. Well, they have that. The people coming in know you've been there and why you've been there, and so they'll trick you with some "Why were you there?" And if right. it doesn't match what they right. have what on they your, have on their screen, yes. there, yeah. Because anyway, they'll I ask just, you that going out, like, mm -hmm. like, what are you going to Canada for? Right. How long are you going to be here? Are you, you know, where are you staying? Right. Things like that. And then if you answer wrong coming back, you're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, so what is it? S seventy nine. We yep. had Jay Johnson, who is Phil's uh, legal counsel, yep. and she was on the show. This was back, when was that? That was a couple of years ago. That was ago, a while right? back, yeah. yeah. And she tried to explain to me, which sort of went over my head a little bit, I must say. Sorry, Jay. Um, that it was not, did not make Vermont mm -hmm. a sanctuary state, but it came close, darn mm -hmm. close. And the feds, like you said, were, were willing to hold back um, two million dollars. I think the money w was the difference. Yeah, and it, it finally came because I think we worked uh, with with yeah. uh, Washington a lot. But it was for all of the grants that the yeah. that the state police put out for extra policing in, in neighborhoods and stuff. And mm -hmm. our local police need mm -hmm. that the burn grants mm -hmm. and some of the other grants. But now uh, Tony Faco said that um, communities can sort of at their own risk. Um, really enforce um, that I as it was originally intended. And I suppose that that risk would be that that community, if they get any kind of federal assistance, um, that yeah. might be at risk. <laughs> Do you know that the fair and impartial policing, that's a policy that's, state, mm -hmm. that's statewide, mm -hmm. but there are some things in it that you don't have, it's voluntary for a, a 
uh, state um, town to uh, adopt. But somehow that all has, there's a whole section in there about how to deal, as we've been talking mm -hmm. about, with immigrants. And, um, or, yeah. or, well, in the context of fair and impartial policing, uh, the fair and impartial <laughs> policing law, it, it's not so much about how to deal with immigrants, it's... Uh, deal with everybody. It, right? deal, with, deal with everyone right. and, and people who maybe look like they don't come from right. here, right? It's, because that's... What do they that, call it when you stop somebody in a, in a car? Type, oh, not oh. typecasting. Um, well, yeah, typecasting is one way of putting uh, it. Yeah, profiling. Yeah. Profiling, thank you. Yeah, yeah that's... Hall... That must be hard n not to do. That's Michael Hall, the, the Manchester police chief, his opinion was that, that the fair and impartial policing was, is a immigration policy. That, that was his words. He said it's in, um, he said exactly, he said um, it, it is basically an immigration policy. Huh. That's his quote. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, just, just like with the sanctuary city thing, we need to be able to do our job. We need to be able to know who we're dealing with. This hinders our ability to do so. I can see how yeah. a police chief from Manchester would say that. Well, because I don't know what, the, what, do you, what they have down there. I know like Rutland's got gangs and they have other issues besides, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think up north it's mostly farmers who, um, yep. I know years ago, Governor Douglas and um, uh, Leahy worked very hard. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the Governor Douglas was down in Washington all the time trying to do something about our farmers because they kept insisting that Americans don't want the jobs that they have available on the farms and they want it, and these people are here mm -hmm. and if you made them go away it would be a real detriment to the farmers mm -hmm. because and, and so they were down trying to get some kind of special dispensation a special program you know or something um, you know just come for the for the farming months and mm -hmm. Go That's what Hall it. suggested. He yeah. said, why don't, if you really want these people here and we want to fix all this mess, why don't we, you know, talking about our, our federal representatives, why don't we come up with a worker program, right. just like he gave some example of some other industries in, in Vermont. I yeah. think he gave the example of apple picking. But anyway. Yes, in Middlebury. That's huge with yep. the Jamaican people there that come up. They have permits. Yeah. So he said, why don't we for these um, illegal immigrants that are here doing this farm right. work, why don't we make a program so that then they can become legit? And then he went on to say his own, his own theory on why they might not be doing that is he said, well, then that opens the door up for now you got to get your workers comp and now you got to get your... Well, but that's the price of <laughs> so, doing business when, you, right. when yep. you have to treat your employees yep. right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think I was very supportive of that. I thought, mm -hmm. say who they are, have, have them come in, cover them... Mm -hmm with the policies that you would cover any employee yeah. and let them let them live a decent life. Well, yeah. the, so the thing that it comes down to though is that's a federal fix, right? Mm -hmm. And so the state and local law enforcement agencies really have no control over that. State and mm -hmm. local lawmakers have no control no. over that. They can't mm -hmm. fix a federal immigration system. Right. So but this is very limited and uh, not limited, but timely limited. I mean, it's a farming, you know, um, October would be sort of the end. And, but so the, there, there must be other states who, who have the same issue, right? So it's the, not just Vermont. the problem that it comes, yeah, I mean, you have, uh, you know, farms in California right. and uh, mm -hmm. Florida and other, right. other places right. around the country where this is a problem. And, and one of the main problems with it is that um, a lot of these... Uh, a lot of these places are seasonal. So there's a seasonal right. worker program, right? Right. right. Um, which is what California mostly uses because there's a defined growing season. So people come back year after year for a defined period of time. So they're picking the vegetables and picking the. Uh, Dairy product. farming is not like that. It is not seasonal. Well, that's true. It is year round, 365 days a year, right. twice a day. You get, those cows have to be milked. That's true. Mm -hmm. So it's not a seasonal thing mm -hmm. where they can come for three months and do the, and do you know the crop, pick the crops or whatever. Right. It's more complicated than that. And our federal you know um, remote the foreign worker programs don't really allow for that. Huh. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I bet they could figure something out. This I, isn't I have some science. personal experience with um. Before I came to Vermont, the last job I had was I did landscaping, like uh, patios and digging up bushes and lawns and stuff like that. And I worked with legal immigrants. Um, I think they were from Mexico, possibly Honduras, but anyway, South America. And they explained to me, we, we had some private conversations with them, and, and this was an interesting point that I was told. They said, we could make more money here if we were illegal because they were doing it legit, because they had their paperwork and they were 
they were square, mm -hmm. they were making less money. This is what the, the immigrants were telling me. They were making wow. less money yeah, by doing it legit. By the time you pay income taxes and all yeah. that stuff on You've top You've got to it. count that in. An employer only wants to spend so much so many dollars on an individual, yep. so you got to split it up the way you have to split it up. So the immigrants are incentivized to do it illegally as well. Right. Or this was like five years ago, but I things might not have changed that much in five years. Yeah. Well, on this thing down in the apple so. orchards, they mm -hmm. provide them housing. Mm -hmm. And that was always a little problem. I always managed to have to go down and it wasn't quite up to par yeah. in some places. And I had to go down and um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what I was doing there, but I'm apparently supposed to know what really good housing is. but. It, <laughs> you call. I was the expert. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but anyway, it was, you, you know, you looked and you went, uh, maybe not. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think uh, this matches. I'm no expert, but I don't think this matches code. Exactly. <laughs> um, so apparently, speaking of uh, uh, prior lives, there's a complaint that was filed against uh, DMV. DMV, yeah, yes. DMV. Um, so what, you know, where is that at? What were the circumstances? And, um, you know, what's the potential disciplinary action on that? front okay is that going on now or is that uh, that out? that is over oh, okay and because I was thinking that's what brought that my story up about the three immigrants sitting in mm -hmm. in amongst the the DMV customers I think there was a fine but um, I heard about this one I, I, I did a little research and uh, someone who, who the someone who filed a lawsuit against the um, DMV was migrant justice the, oh, the group right, up in Burlington right. Uh, they allege that the DMV basically had no rights to be sharing information regarding people's legal status with the feds, NICE, and so on. And I, I read this story off the Migrant Justice website, and I was reading it carefully, looking for one thing, and I didn't find it. Um, nowhere in the report by Migrant Justice do they actually address whether or not the persons in question were actually illegal immigrants. <laughs> Oh, so really? I can only assume that they probably they were, were here right, illegally, they were. but they are nonetheless. That's probably a moot point to them because they just feel that's in their own view with, that right. right. And they were the so. ones very vocal about the stopping of the car, full mm -hmm. of um, full of illegal aliens. That yeah. was they were they were very vocal about that. And mm -hmm. you know, when you're riding in a car, you really shouldn't be pulled over for. You're supposed to be doing something wrong. Right. Right. Exactly. Not being something wrong. Right. But so. according to to Michael Hall, both the DMV and another sheriff's department up north. I'm sorry, I don't have it on the top of my head, but two two the, the DMV and another sheriff's department were both fined for. Oh, really? Uh, are penalized in some way for huh. cooperating with with ICE or, or the feds. So. Well, and they also got themselves in hot water more recently for selling, <laughs> selling bait. Selling all <laughs> oh. information. <laughs> yeah. You know, I oh, I yeah. asked right away. When did that start? Because I wanted to make sure it was after I was there. <laughs> yeah. But the only thing we did when I was there was sell information on cars for Carfax. Right. You know, that yep. little uh, Fox thing there. I think, I think every DMV. You know. Yeah, so that you knew your car had been sold, not to who, but how many times right. it's been sold and that stuff. So I felt good about that. I went, oof. But um, uh, one of the guys who's a um, private eye, private, he would have access to our... Um, to our records hmm. to, to look up, well, you know, on all the CSI, they always check with DMV to see, mm -hmm. right? DMV's so, all got all the yeah, goods. Exactly. But mm -hmm. I, uh, maybe there, I was going to look to see if there was an exemption for the, for the PIs. So, and uh, getting back to um, Act 79, there was a um, former uh, police chief, Del Pozo, did mm -hmm. voice some concerns. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, Burlington police chief is always... Um, always gets attention whenever they weigh in on, <laughs> you know, statewide initiatives. But, uh, you know, what his concerns are mostly that this uh, new state law would put us at odds with federal enforcement. Yeah, right. um, and that, that was a surprise to me that he gave that answer because, as we talked about before the show, he is was one of the more liberal... Yeah, he is, he is very liberal uh, uh, with yeah, policing. And no longer in the department, uh, of course. But in any case, um, just... Uh, like barely a month ago, he came here to Montpelier to the library in town, and he gave a talk about policing in general and dealing with the community. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a lot of very, I, I guess I dare say, controversial lib liberal views when it comes to when it comes to these issues. So for him to say that he's concerned about the police not being allowed to interact with the feds, I, I thought that was 
surprising anyway. <laughs> if yeah, even but, even a liberal voice is saying that, there must be a problem. But I think it's been, what I said before is you don't know how many times our folks deal with all of the agencies you were there isn't this isn't just the the issue right, they deal all of kinds issues. of stuff and mm -hmm. like um there was a big issue the the uh, governor was weighing in on this when they do the the fuel dyes they mm -hmm. check to see if there's illegal fuel dyes in the in the trucks and they mm -hmm. stop them down on route mm -hmm. one brand not uh, route one Hmm. What's the big highway down? Seven. 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 Oh, no. no, on the on the east side. Yeah. Oh, east side. They, oh, 98. Uh, about 91. a couple of miles. 91. 91. That's it. A couple of miles. They have the um, U.S. DOT and all these people, and they work with our guys all the time to coordinate this. Now, obviously, if they're stopping a truck for the fuel dyes, they're stopping it for a legitimate reason. And if they find other other stuff, mm. uh, especially for a commercial vehicle, they'll write them a ticket. Yeah. And uh, so they work on that. They work on a lot of stuff. Well, together. they're checking for off-road diesel in the yeah, tanks. Right, exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's, it's dyed red. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, so one thing I noticed in this report, uh, Michael Hall is retired. Uh, Tony Fakos is not. He's, but he's working on. He's, I think he may he be retired. May be retired by now. But at the time I interviewed yeah, him, he wasn't. He wasn't. And I've experienced this with a number of stories um, that since I've been in Vermont, police don't like to talk to the media about controversial issues when while they're still police. Right, <laughs> right. They're, right. they're more willing to do so right. after they've left well, Once the they've position. retired. Yeah, right, right. I know it's the same thing with teachers. If you ask teachers about, you know, controversial teachers things, when, when they're retired, they'll spill the beans, but <laughs> before so. Well, it's, you know, you've got to work with these people. Well, then so. they pull you up to this legislature, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we should um, switch gears if you don't mind. Sure. It's a... Mm -hmm. We're into the show here a little bit, and we wanted to talk. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we had a little discussion before the show. About so we're going to talk, talk about uh, TCI. TCI? Which yeah, is or, okay. um, Transportation the, Climate Initiative. Yes, I remembered you, it. I got it wrong last time. Because you said you wanted to talk about that, and um, yeah. I didn't know what it, what it meant. I had to run home and check it out. It's a regional carbon tax. Yeah, and but I, it's, and it's I, something transportation... Climate initiative. Climate initiative. Although thank some you. some may call it a pricing, a carbon, carbon. pricing mechanism. Yes, but we right. don't. They don't want us to say the word. They don't carbon want us to say carbon tax. Right. But right. I, I will go ahead and say carbon tax, even be bold. though. Be bold. I will be bold because I looked. I actually looked up the definition of tax, and it's it's pretty straightforward. You, you take public money and you right. put it into a pool and use it for wonderful things for the government, I guess, for for us. <laughs> anyway, Very good. but nonetheless, uh, so it's a regional carbon tax. It was. It, it, I want to say 12 or 13 states um, were looking into this uh, pr pr preliminary uh, stage, feeling it out. Uh, and New Hampshire just recently. New Hampshire yeah, just nixed, nixed them. Like they're like, take us off the list. Right. Take us off the list. Right. And uh, I I if you really want to get nitty gritty, it's a cap and trade or oh. cap and. Uh, they had another phrase for it. But he, here's the mechanism of it. So you get a, like a cap or a quota. Cap and tax? Cap and tax. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's I mean, exactly. That, that really is a, a, good, a good name for it. Mm. So you get like a, a limit or a, you know, amount that you can use of your carbon emissions. Per, per state. Per state. Because there's 13-ish right. yep. states that are part of this. Yep. Initiative. And so once you get to that limit, if you want to go higher, you've got to buy your carbon credit, your pollution, your oh right God. to pollute, which for all intents and purposes is a tax. I mean, let's, let's be honest. And it's the state so. that pays it, but they reassess it back, right? Some of those mechanisms I, I would have to double, double check, but essentially you, you pay somebody to, I guess, the TCI, whoever, whoever's running that, and uh, it will go, that money is supposed to go towards climate initiatives such as oh. uh, probably electric Sorry. cars, probably um, maybe mass transportation. I don't and know, how bike do lanes. they dole it out back to the states or they just spend it themselves? I would imagine that it probably goes, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to work mechanisms like this, but generally speaking, it would probably go back to the states that didn't pass their threshold. Oh, I see. So, so stay. Or that. they wouldn't go to like nonprofits, uh, public um, weatherization go, programs, and things probably like go that. Back, it would probably end up there. And, yeah. um, but it's probably the way that most of the time these types of um, 
like compacts work right. is that say of the 13 three go over their threshold those three have to pay a penalty and the penalty would get then and uh, who oversees the this um, their goal. one hand uh, doing washing the other or whatever who's who's um double checking this gang Oh, gosh. We don't know yet because why? Why would New Hampshire? Was it New Hampshire that pulled out? You said New Hampshire pulled out. There must be some control or something they didn't like. Um, th there is, but um, w what I know is Governor Scott has said he's he, not no, going to yeah, sign right, it. Right. Um, but he he also said he's a little tricky. I don't want to say tricky. He was specific with his words. I'll just read what he said. He said, most of the states in the Northeast and a number of them have a seat at the table to learn about the initiative. We have to be, he said, we have to be, be objective about this. I wonder if that's opening a window, who knows. But suffice to say, my feelings haven't changed on a carbon tax. If that's all it is, a carbon tax, and I'm not going, I'm not supportive of that. I asked him that question in a press conference. Well, even if it's uh, not, a, it's a carbon tax with a limit, but am I, am well, I... Or, so the, no, it's so a carbon tax with a threshold. threshold. If you hit a threshold, threshold. the problem okay. is, is that the thresholds that have been put out there so far are below well, where, well, where we, our current we, emissions are. Oh, I see. So oh. we would hit the threshold year one, right? And that's where this seventeen cent. Well, that won't cent, help us any. Well, that's where the seventeen cent number is that came from. Right. I think seven days put that out. Seventeen. Uh, seventeen cents. I'm not sure exactly what what the numbers are, yeah. but I do know that I asked him again in the same press conference. I asked him. Well, be, because, you know, wor words matter and titles matter. So he said he's against the carbon tax. I said, well, what if it's going to be like a cap and trade type of deal? Because, you know, you can call one, you, you can call things different. You know how politicians can call something by a different name and then say they, d they do or they don't support it. So again, he says, I'm against the carbon tax. I just think it's important. Then he says, I just think it's important not to discount anything we're there to listen. He's talking about in the fall that right. um, his a and representative was at the seat with the other 12 or 13 states listening about this thing. And then he says, some states are supportive. We'll see where everyone ends up. We're still in the learning phase. Mm -hmm. So but this, I mean, carbon, just to refresh people's mind, carbon tax is gas. It's heating fuel. There's a laundry list of mm -hmm. stuff that that it well, can be put on, right? So uh, basically what it would come down to is how Vermont would want to pay the penalty, right? So depending on how it pays the penalty and whether it assesses it back to people who consume those, things like gas and heating right. fuel, right, which is, seems like mm -hmm. the likely thing that it would be assessed right. against. Well, this one would be based on transportation, to be clear. Specifically to transportation. Oh, transportation. So, Hence the so name it transportation have to be, climate it would have to be gasoline. Yeah. But you're right, the conventional carbon tax does have that broader, yeah, right. broader coverage. So it doesn't include heating fuel. You would think not. Although Who knows? It's in the it's yeah. in the trucks, eh, Brentley? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, so that's this is interesting though, because there's a marked difference between what Michael is talking about right. and what a cap and trade program is. And the, and the big difference is that the threshold for a cap and trade program is set globally, right? Right. So it is all 13 states collectively say, here's where we're capping carbon emissions at. Yep. And each of them can then say, okay, well, I want to, I want. We're, we're going to emit a little more, um, so we need to find someone who's, pay, who's emitting less so that we balance, balance out. Balance it out. Right, so, and, and there could be dollars attached to that, um, kind of like we do with renewable energy credits now. Right, There's right. a regional compact that, you know, New, uh, New Jersey's like, I can't meet my, uh, my renewable energy goal, right. so they're gonna buy well, some renewable energy credits we've, we've from sent some We've set some goals up for ourselves, and I don't, from what I remember last time, we weren't quite near those goals by a long shot, were we? So, you're talking renewable energy. Yeah, all those goals, fifty yeah. percent, whatever they. So uh, the early years, we were great. We were doing well. Yeah. Um, now you know we're five, six, seven years in. Yeah. Um, we are the the problem is we're still ahead of the goal. The problem is the trajectory that we're on. It's not gonna. We're gonna be very behind the goal 10 years from now. Is it because we're so small? You just can't possibly find enough people to buy electric cars. It's, or whatever the solution is? It's the technology is not there yet, oh, is, the, is really what it is. The, and the technology and the adoption rate of the technology is not there. Yeah. Not to say it won't be 10 years. It's hard to predict. Like, who would have predicted 10 years ago te what Tesla has done? Right, for right? sure. Oh, for sure. Or the, the cost of solar dropping as much as it has. Has it? 
It's uh, the cost of solar today is about thirty percent of what it was ten years ago. Okay. Well, but that's it still what happens with everything, though, right? After right. a while, they, they figure, figure out more efficient ways to yeah. produce it. They figure well, wait, out. Well, now wait a minute. Solar is still it, it's up there. It still gets the thirty percent tax credit, right? The federal tax credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you got to factor that it's in. Been. And I, the last I've spoken to the utilities, electric utilities, it's still costing them nine, ten, eleven ish cents per kilowatt hour, which is a Good amount more than the three, four, five cents you usually industrial pay. industrial scale. You're right because right, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot involved in industrial yeah. scale. I'm talking about the cost of a panel okay. itself has has okay. dropped to about thirty percent of what it was okay. ten years ago, which it must have been quite impacts, high ten years ago. <laughs> it, well, well and it impacts and... mostly home. You'll see it more for homeowners mm -hmm. um, who are doing rooftop solar right, than you will right. in industrial scale. Yeah, um, I. I Notice something interesting in my, my article here. Uh, they're talking about, we, we went over, what will this money be used for? You collected mm -hmm. TCI right. money. Where is it going to go? Uh, a TCR-related document from the Agency and Natural Resources website states, working regionally, Vermont will, will be able to reduce transportation emissions in a way that keeps us economically competitive with our neighbors. Uh, end quote. Some key action items in the document include electric vehicle incentives, expanding investments in transit, public transit, right. and, quote, incentives to influence land use decisions that lead to decreased demand for single occup occupancy vehicles, end quote. That sounds kind of interesting. That's an HV, what is it, those the lines where they want you to have yeah, more than... Yeah, in cities and yeah, urban H areas. They want you to live H in a, like a H compact... HOV. Maybe, like, maybe that's where they want you to live in the middle of the village instead of out on the hills. <laughs> well, they are, they're pushing for that, that we not they live in, in rural it's, Vermont anymore. We come to the city, which is not happening. Uh, yeah, Just it's, saying. I mean, I mean that sounds a, a lot scale. to me yeah. like, like what the, um, the old folks used to warn us about, where they're going to try to push us into the... <laughs> into right. the well, tiny, tiny apartments. Governor in the Douglas used to, hmm. um, Governor Douglas, um, Howard Dean, Governor hmm. Dean used hmm. to want us all to pull off the highway and go downtown to get gas and stop for food and not build anything Close by the, the inter interstate, interstate, so you'd have yeah. to move downtown, but I don't think that went too far, because he was pretty um, um, interested in doing that. Yeah, but it didn't the work. problem is that's where all the tourists go, well, is they want something right, right. off the interstate. And right. I mean, Vermont is a heavily, heavily biased towards tourism industry, so right. that's We think our, all of our towns are mm -hmm. adorable, but <laughs> when yeah. you're heading for Pennsylvania, you just go. Yeah, yeah. or We don't really have the, um, the, the conventional, uh, uh, what do you call it, the highway stops that most states do, right? No, uh, I mean, the closest thing to that, you know, regionally is really the, the ones in New Hampshire. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, right. New Hampshire has a few of those. And then, right. uh, Ours have vending machines and coffee. <laughs> yeah, vending machines But some coffee. of them are closed because they have, um, the sewage has uh, failed them. Yeah. Oh. A lot of them are closed because if they're there for a, a million years and they haven't done anything, it could get ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, one more point about the, the TCI, though, is um, so we, we went about how, we talked about how Governor Scott said he's not going to no. sign it, although it, if you read his words carefully, it seems like he's keeping a small window open. Yeah, because the headline just said he's not going to support carbon tax. Right. Yeah. So that doesn't say TCI, it says his carbon bets. tax. The, right? I, I mean, the real if, if, question is yeah. whether or not the TCI is a carbon tax. Right. And that's lar that question I, largely I, depends on who you ask, right? I, I can't imagine. I mean, maybe I'm naive, but I can't imagine any way you could twist the TCI and not... They'll try. Say it's a tax. I, but I, they will, they yeah. probably will try. So, so the other thing is um, the, so the lawmakers. Tax on all carbon. Because <laughs> exactly. partial carbon tax. The, the lawmakers uh, are saying this is going to be like their, their big accomplishment this year. Right. I think both, Chris Pearson um, comes to mind. I think both the House and the Senate have said this oh, is going to be a signature, a signature gonna be push. They're going to be their signature bill. Yeah. So I, I kind of read it as like, uh, what, what's the phrase, like an, an, an unstoppable force and an immovable object? Right. I <laughs> like, think it's called, um, what is it, when you just take inch by inch by yeah. inch, you know, yeah. so just take well, this and then they'll add carbon something Carbon tax else. Uh, proposals in the past haven't even made it out of committee, right? Right. Um, because there was not enough support. They're, they're desperately trying to not call this a carbon tax. And I, I just can't, maybe I'm naive, but I just can't see how they could possibly pull that off. It's really what the pricing scheme looks like, right? Is, is 
does it look like a carbon tax? Does it smell like a carbon tax? Does it operate like a carbon but tax? Vermonters you know. don't want it. No, they don't. I mean, for them yeah. to say that it's, it's necessary, maybe they just think we need to help to understanding this, that we're all a little light on brains, but nobody wants carbon tax. We've if, had enough, correct? If you're taking money based on your use of carbon, in this case, right taking it and putting it towards a public service, it could be anything, you know, preparing the roads, environmentalism, anything, it's a tax, right? It's a tax. Am, so, I, is there, am I wrong about that? So here's, yeah. a, here, well, here's the interesting thing, though, is that, um, you know, the, the Vermonters are going to balk at a 17% or a 17 cent increase in gas prices, right? That's going to be a non-starter for a lot of people. But on the flip side, people love incentives, right? And they go oh, and buy right. a, pl a, a plug-in hybrid or an electric right, vehicle, right. and they get $5,000 off of it. People love that kind of stuff. They didn't do that with me, and my whole house blew up. But I plugged it in, and it went, shh, dead. Yeah. <laughs> but well, Bruce was, was very excited. And again, maybe I'm naive on this, too, but isn't that a little bit of a red flag when the thing that you're buying is, like, hugely subsidized by yeah. public money? Yeah, but, yeah. but you're getting the 5000 well, You don't think about well, that, let's right? Be, let's be real, though, is that uh, fossil fuels are also massively subsidized by federal dollars. Right. So right. it's not like, you know, right. we buy subsidized things all the time, yeah. including farm like food, food products in the U.S. What's got heavily, my heavily subsidized. What has my attention is about if you burn wood, then they're going. I think they're looking at what kind of fur, um, furnace. I say furnace, and it's not a furnace. What kind of wood burning stove do you have, mm. and that you have to have a certain kind? So oh, I'm waiting yeah. for them to come in and tell me that's yeah. no good. You well, have this, to spend. Uh, this bill is not uh, dealing with that. No, but it's you're not right. just mm. transportation. So the, the interesting thing was, you know. There's like a lot of interesting things about this with transportation, but but what would be curious is if it ended up working away. And this may be what the governor's office is waiting to see: is if it worked out in such a way that Vermont actually met its part of the goal, right? Of this claim, we might actually be getting money back. It might be a net positive no. to the state, and if that's the case, well, that would open up some eyes and ears. Then, then this maybe actually ended up being a good deal until there's such a point as we stop. But it still the goal. comes from individuals. Yeah, but if it goes back, right? Yeah, but and, that's, and that's it, sort of doesn't it, come to you, right? Right. <laughs> it would go back to like this 17 cents on net. We may actually get like 25 cents right. back. It, and as long as we could see it in a tax reduction, and if it came that'd be good. You know, where it goes to is a question, right? Does it go to you know, uh, you know, efficiency programs right. or uh, subsidizing electric bills or right. you know whatever it is. So that that I'm curious to see the details of how this ends up. So this know. is what we think's coming this this January, Michael. Is it coming soon? At your oh yeah, this is going to be. TV I think show? I bet we'll probably start to hear about this this week or or oh, soon. Oh really? So well, they're coming in tomorrow, right? The, they are going in tomorrow. tomorrow. The legislature starts tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I, I looked up uh, S Agency of Natural Resources Secretary Julie Moore um, addressed this question of if this is a tax. And I'm going to read, uh, this is from the Vermont Daily Chronicle dot com. Uh, she said, um, she was asked to explain the position that, that they have on this. And, and she said, Were those invest where those investments get made is the key to the conversation. A carbon tax is generating revenue without saying where those revenues will go. The administration has a strong desire to see, and then in brackets it says investments in economic, de economic development and affordability. Now, if I'm reading in between the lines, I feel like Moore is trying to say, if we use this money for something, something that's good for you, good then, for you, right? then it's not a tax. And right. I, I think that's... Uh, this is sort of the same argument <laughs> as ways and means on fees. Right. And I said to one of them, I said, last year you increased every fee in motor vehicles. That's a tax. Mm. Because you haven't focused on one, right. one area. You focused on everybody in Vermont. That's a tax. If you, if you, have, uh, you, know, you have to register your car every year, right? right? Um, if you raise the fees on registering a yep. vehicle, yep. you just yeah. raise the fee. You just... On Any Vermonter who owns a vehicle now right. has to pay more out right. of pocket. It's not like you did snowmobiles or something, which is a choice 
Right. I, I choose to, to buy a snowmobile. Well, some may argue that a vehicle is a choice, although that's a hard argument to make no, in, not Vermont. in Vermont. <laughs> not in Vermont. There's yeah. no alternative. Well, you, and you see that even with, you know, and we talk about alternatives to motor vehicles, right? We talk about high occupancy um, right. uh, carpool HLV lanes thing. and this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've built, um, and, and these are, they're well utilized, but the, uh, um, commuter parking lots and yep. stuff like that, which are which, which are great. Which is a big success here in Vermont. That is something that really that actually does work. Yeah. Uh, in mm -hmm. Vermont, people really take advantage of those. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What really hasn't worked is public transportation. Uh, you know, there's there's an article uh, even last week where um, Green how, Mountain Transit is two million dollars in the hole. How, well, they don't have the, they don't you, have the the uh, quality the, the volume mm -hmm. to make the money if you go it's out to a rural uh, state. There's yeah. no way. I, I just can't. Maybe I, I, I know there was some talk about some kind of train project from Barrie oh, to, to Montpelier. They've talked about that for a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. But I it's mean, not this worth is, the investment. Is the problem? If you live in Vermont, you you should have a car. I mean, if you right. can't drive, that's one thing. But right. you, it's just a reality of rural living. Right. It's, and well, besides, what are the on a train, oh, I'm sorry, the train to to fix the tracks. They can only go 35 miles an hour pretty much everywhere. So to fix the tracks to get the train up to a a decent traveling speed would cost a fortune just well, for the they tracks. Well, can't get it going that fast. That yeah, no, you can't because right. they'll go and off the trail. Yeah. Your off largest cities in the whole state are Burlington and Montpelier. I mean, you're yeah. not going to get the utilization. No, Ru no. Rutland. Rutland does have actually uh, uh, a pretty decent okay. public yep. transit system. Yep. Well, yeah. Within but the city. Within, within, the, the, within the city. Within the city. Yeah. They limited it to just that. And that's, I think, one of the issues that um, GMTA has run into is they've tried to do too much. But if you can't make it work in a place like Burlington or Chittenden County, it's yeah, hard to make right. it work. Well, they were they talked about a train from IBM to Burlington to uh, to Montpelier, mm -hmm. and they thought they would get the volume because of where people have to live. People and, and people that work at IBM don't live in Burlington and Montpelier. I know, I know. But they, they don't. They thought it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was a big discussion when I was there. Yeah. Anyway. So I I think this Julie Moore co quote is is really. Uh, key to the essence of what's going to be debated out uh, throughout the session because mm -hmm. they're going to try to, the, their proponents of this TCI, I think, are, are going to try to play the card that this is not a tax. Well, it'll be well, interesting to see how it's organized, TCI. Mm -hmm. Who's in charge? Who makes the decision? Yeah. Who sits at the table? How much voting do they have based on, based on, um, um, what sit, criteria? Yeah, well, how many people do they have in the state? And, and how, you know, who, is you all, everybody have one vote? And, mm -hmm. Well, and how does the distribution mechanism end right. up working? And mm -hmm. if you, you know, it's, I think it's pretty clear how we raise the revenue in this case, because yeah. there's really only one source for the revenue mm -hmm. that's on the table, and that's gas tax. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And whether that's at the pump or whether at the distribution level, it almost doesn't matter. And they can't even figure out how they're going to get money out of the electric vehicles now either. That's another. Uh, that's that's, that's another, another whole, whole thing. Whole other deal. But uh, you know, this, the real question is, you know, what does the agreement with other states look like, right. and where do the excess revenues, the the revenue that's generated, where does that go? And where is the punishment for a state that doesn't hold up mm -hmm. its end of the bargain? Because You'll bet there'll be somebody, and there well, won't be, be anything you can do about and it. And hopefully it won't be us. And <laughs> really exactly. One more thing, aspect to, to keep in mind about this, I had it explained to me. So the tax is actually primarily put on the um, fuel producer. Mm. Right. Uh, Vermont, is, is the way I understand it, we do not produce our own fuel, right? No, we apply it to the distributor. Yeah. Okay. Which is the same way thing we do with beer, by the way. There's, oh, there are taxes well, at here's the distribution. To the beard, just <laughs> yeah, you, who knew that when you go to doll, buy your six dollar pint that you're actually paying a twenty percent tax in there? So, anyway, where I'm going that. with all this is, um, let's say Vermont opts out. Phil, Phil Scott says, "Nope, it's a tax. We don't do it." We might be up the creek anyway with this thing because if we're not buying our fuel from Vermont, we're buying it. Let's say we're buying it sure, from we're it through them. another state that did implement the TCI. Well, now you're paying it anyway. <laughs> yeah, so. if you buy it from a well, so. most of the producers. Well, there is a, there are oil refineries like nearby. So that's you know the nearest one though is New Hampshire. So we have that's, to get our buddy in here from the fuel dealers. The, the way uh, uh, yeah, Matt Coda would yeah. be better at this. But the way I had it explained to me was Vermont. It's almost like a moot point because Vermont's not going to be producing this anyway. It's going to be we're going to be paying other states right. for our fuel. And whether those states implement the TCI or not 
is actually the, the key question. They'll well, look this, to us to help them with their obligations, I would imagine. Well, this suddenly right? becomes an issue for the distributors, though. It's like they, they're start gonna, gonna have to start getting strategic about where they would buy mm -hmm. their fuel from anyway. Right. So this it's certainly not a mm -hmm. consumer's, the consumer's problem. It's mm -hmm. gonna be a distributor's problem mm -hmm. about where are they sourcing their fuel from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, we have three minutes left. See how much we can chat chat. Nope. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about these two issues or? Uh, on, on these two issues, I, I think TCI is definitely, I, I think it's going to impact the election because as we know, oh. you know, when, um, uh, You're talking about state and local election. The, right? the state, the state, this is an election year, right? Scott's going to go up against, um, you know, whoever the Democrats come up with. And I remember right when Rebecca he Holcomb. kind of renegated a little bit on his gun stance with the with the gun bills. Yep. There was a lot of upset constituents. Right. Now that obviously did not impact him enough to lose his next election. But I wonder, could this, if he was to backtrack on the right. carbon tax, uh, could that be the <clears throat> That's interesting. what breaks the camel's back or what yep. you know? The, well, again, it, I think it largely comes down to though when we're talking about elective politics, it yeah. largely comes down to. How do Vermonters interpret the TCI? Right. Do they see it as a carbon tax, or do they see it as oh, something different? Right, and that is going to really determine. Right. What That's what scares the election me. plays. Yep. I'm I'm not supposed to be a, an opinion person when, when it comes oh, comes to my reporting. Know to tell? But <laughs> when I the reason I called it a carbon tax straight from the get-go is because it is. when I when I had heard about Moore's comments, and that's why I was able to look them up real quickly like that, and. Um, I was pretty baffled and a little bit taken aback about that. It, to me, I mean, you, you got to call what, what's the phrase, a spade a spade, or yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, so the, the Essex yeah. plan and all that stuff is is gone for now. For now, they're going to focus on TCI, TCI. as the one step. Uh, and it oversteps into the, the legislature and all that because you just have the governors making the decision. There's no, as you said, oh. it never came out of committee, right? Isn't right. that what you said? So well, this uh, oversteps the that whole never process. Came out of committee. The no carbon tax bill has made it out of control. Right. So here you have the TCI, which is only decided on by the governor. Whoa, that's a It I oversteps that. the whole. Well, yes thing. and no, because the governor can't levy a tax by themselves. Yeah, it's got to go in through the so House. It's any gotta money. Go, and he's got to originate in the House. So that he can agree to be part of the compact. He just can't contribute any money to it. Okay. Right. So there's two pieces any, of the Yeah, any money bills, there. anything with money attached to it has to start in the House. Okay. And no. so it, it probably has to go through somehow. You're right. They but the ultimate money. nay or yay comes him. from him. Yeah, well, either way, because he still has to sign the bill into law or agree to be part of the compact. Yeah. yeah. You know, one and how many states? You said 13 now? Did there I was, remember? as you said, New Hampshire opted Back out. out. Um, Chris Sununu um, said nope. no. Right. He's been doing that a lot lately. Yeah. And that, you know, if you think about it, um, Scott almost went partner with them on that health care plan. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So obviously those two have a, have a connection there, even and though that didn't work out. And you got to wonder, is, this, is that going to be peer pressure on, on Scott to... Yeah, know? well, the interesting thing about that is uh, he ended up doing that anyway. Um, oh. uh, Governor Scott. Governor Scott, right. Yeah, ended yeah. up doing the paid family leave through VSEA, the okay. State Employees yeah, Association. Right. But without right. New Hampshire. Without New Hampshire, right. which was an interesting... And that was two years it. later. Yep. But I uh, figured, I guess they ran the numbers and decided they have a large enough pool. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, when I was per commissioner of personnel, I went to the, uh, the union and also the municipalities asking to join, mm -hmm. to be a bigger, a bigger thing, but uh, they didn't want to. Via, I mean, it was interesting. I just saw an article recently saying, because um, the uh, UVM Medical Center has a, new, uh, has a new uh, uh, chief executive, yep, right? Do. Um, and the article called them the largest employer in Vermont. That's not true. Uh, they're the largest private employer oh, we in the must state be of the Vermont. Largest. The state of Vermont itself is the largest yeah, employer. We were always far. back and forth with IBM. It is now past the time of the show. An hour nope. is gone. Michael, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This was very, got all juiced up here. Lots of things to talk about. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, because I'd like you to come back and talk about the, uh, the traffic stop mm. study because I think people need to know that, mm. that our, co our law enforcement are not... Mm -hmm. um, doing not racist. Track it stops on based on race, which mm -hmm. is a good thing. Do we have a large enough sample size to really know that? I think though? they yeah, they felt very comfortable, and they have a lot of charts and graphs. Although 
we have such a small minority percentage, it's really That's hard, the problem. To, hard <laughs> to judge. I yeah. think it's four percent, four or maybe five. Three or four percent. Yeah, five percent now, but with everybody mm -hmm. in considered under one, but mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be doing that anyway. So thank you all for listening. We appreciate your tuning in. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites. <laughs>